the 52 crews starting the Nissan dealer 400 woke to clear skies and would only have dust with which to contend and not dust and fog as was the case last year. Ahead lay two laps of a deceptively tough 172 kilometer route which included some high speed roads, virtually impassable sand tracks, rocky mountain sections and the odd mud patch. I had a fairly good run. We got stuck at a marshal point. He kept telling me about uh, me losing my spare wheel instead of clipping my card. Um, but other than that, we had a nice clean run. The weight, the weight lumbered us a little bit. Um, we didn't uh, realize that it would affect us as badly as it has. So it's something we still have to need to sort of work around and hopefully get that sorted out. Unfortunately, we only managed second place yesterday, just by 13 seconds. But I think we're well positioned for today. You know, it's quite nice to be able to chase people from the back. And it's a two-loop race, so we'll follow the guys for the first loop, and then I think we'll put the hammer down when it comes to the second loop. It's actually very nice to be back again, because we had a lot of missed, we had to come back. And we had yesterday a good loop. I said, I want to thank you for the bike. I think Toyota has a wonderful bike. The hanteering is brilliant. We can't stop. And it's nice to be back again. We hope it's going today. Goed, ons is nou voor die klomp eerst so, maar net, het is moeilijker om voor te blijven om van achteraf in te halen. So, ons so, so moet kijken of ons kan voor blijven. Last year I ran an independent rear suspension on, on the other car, but that car burnt out in, in deck half. Uh, so this, this car is uh, repaired, uh, the one that Shinazuka crashed in deck half, but it's repaired, it's, it's running fine, it's just got the solid rear axle again, but uh, I tend to think that might be a little bit better, it's better with a, with a stability and uh, it's going, it's going fine. Uh, the cars are just a bit uh, down on power because of the restrictor, but uh, it's not a big difference and it's, it's, it's still very enjoyable to drive. De Villiers led the field away, or almost didn't, when he bogged the engine of the Nissan. Starting first certainly has its advantages when it comes to having to race in someone else's dust, as Fossenter Stiercher would soon find out. Macher, Haneri and Stangl were third away in the total Jimco and would be followed seven seconds later by Hrobler and Leek. the drivers see in these conditions. The ABSA off-road championship is split into two categories for production and special vehicles, with each category scored separately and overall champions declared in each of the categories. Coverage of this year's championship on Supersport will reflect the action in each category, and combined results will not be published. The action was fast and furious. Gibson and Brown were the fourth special vehicle crew away, and were strong contenders for overall victory. Krobler and Prinzlu had high hopes for the three-car GBS racing team, which included Johan Gerber and Kutsia Labaskachny and husband and wife JP and Linda Augustine, all in identical single-cab Class D Nissan hardbody pickups. Kronier and Birken were up next in the four-cylinder powered Class D Castrol Toyota Hilux, which is at somewhat of a disadvantage compared to the six-cylinder powered Nissan, Ford, Pajero, Land Rover and Isuzu rivals in the class. Could the four-month layoff have made the young Kronier or veteran Birken a little rusty? De Villiers and Jordan will also be competing in the FIA World Cross Country Rally Championship this season. And the seat time gained in South Africa will put them in good stead for their international campaign. De Villiers is highly rated internationally and would like to build in his victory in last year's Morocco Rally.
production vehicle champion Foss has yet to win a race overall. He and his have what it takes to pull off that elusive victory, but will first have to get by their missing teammates, who between them have won 12 of the past 16 races, with Probler and Leek accounting for nine of them. Probler and Leek piled on the pressure, but the proudly South African Nissan hardbody was still troubled by the electrical problem encountered in the prologue that caused the engine to cut out or misfire. The team Ford Racing Ranger was running well, with Woolridge and Schalthammer now well settled in after a four-month hiatus. The addition of the performance restrictor had reduced the overall power output and the top speed, but improved the torque significantly on all the production vehicles. Robler and Prinsler were confident that the repairs to the front differential were successful and set about trying to open a gap on the rest of the Class D field. Meanwhile, Cronier and Birkin had no intention of letting the GBS racing Nissan out of their sight and were pushing the Castrol Toyota Hilux to the limit. Maybe Cronier was pushing a little too hard. de Brain and Father Yarp are a formidable combination and over the years both have spent time behind the wheel. Hugo is a stylish driver who rarely damages the vehicle. Former Class E champions Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham were delighted with their new Class D Team Ford Racing Ranger that is powered by a 4-litre V6 engine. They would, however, have to pull out the stops if they wanted to stay ahead of a hard-charging Alfie Cox and Ralph Pitchford in the Nissan and Nampo 400 winners Hunterstein and Okifari in the Isuzu. De Villiers and Jordan were having a trouble-free run in the proudly South African Nissan hardbody. The pair last won on the 2003 Queen Motorspares Tarka 400 and were keen to start the season with a win. Foss and Tersteche were in good form and in a position to challenge for the lead. Their teammates, Krobler and Leek, were frustrated by the ongoing electrical problems. of performance restrictors served to level the playing field, which was evident in that the top four vehicles were separated by two minutes. Woolridge and Schalthammer ended the 2003 season with a win and were hoping to start the year in a similar vein. Robler and Prinsloo still had matters well under control in Class D, but not for long. The GBS Racing Nissan stripped third gear, and the Clarkstall businessmen were forced to slow their pace dramatically, which allowed arch-rivals Cronier and Birkin to nip by and take over the Class D lead. Krobler and Prinsloo would later lose fifth gear too, and be overtaken in quick succession by Hugo and Yarp de Brain in the Class E leading Castle Toyota Hilux, and Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham in the Team Ford Racing Ranger. Their race was effectively run. It wasn't all plain sailing for Cronier and Birkin. The right-hand front drive shaft broke, and they too were forced to slow their pace, which allowed the De Brains to move up to fifth overall. 
the Class E leaders piled on the pressure and opened a 10-minute lead on Nielsen's elder van der Valt. Cronier and Birken completed the first lap in two-wheel drive and lost 15 minutes while the drive shaft was replaced. Stellenbosch based Davilius and Jordan were having a trouble-free run in the Dakar specification Nissan and had a 50-second lead. Team manager Glenn Hall and his crew were faced with the unenviable task of preparing the three Class T challengers in six weeks after Dakar, which included a complete rebuild of the heavily damaged ex Kenjiro Sonazuka Nissan, now in the hands of Davilius. Reigning production vehicle champions Krobler and Leek had moved up to second overall after Fossen Testercher picked up a puncture. Stylish driving from Krobler, who was rated as one of the best drivers on dirt in South Africa. and Schultheimer also took advantage of Fosser's misfortune and were now third overall and just over two minutes behind the race leader. Like Cox and Pitchford, the Ford pair are also former off-road motorcycle champions. Foss and Testiercher were back on track but experiencing power steering problems on the proudly South African Nissan and would eventually have to make up close on 20 minutes on the leaders by the end of lap one. Despite having to run in two-wheel drive, Cronier and Birken kept up the pressure and managed to get past the Class E leading the Brain Pair and set off in pursuit of the Class D leading team Ford Racing Ranger. The Ford would soon lose four-wheel drive, which would slow Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham and allow Mark Cronier and Chris Birkin to close the gap and grab the Class D lead. So far, there have been three different leaders in Class D. Cox and Pitchford also managed to overtake the Ford, but would retire before the end of the first lap with suspension failure on the Arnold Chats cars Nissan. There was a new leader in Class D. Hannes Steyn and Oki Faria had had a clear run in the Isuzu and managed to overtake Cronier and Birken on a sandy section where four-wheel drive was essential. The Castrol Toyota pair were now second in Class D and more concerned with getting safely back to the pits to have the drive shaft replaced than to chase after the new class leaders. Hugo Njarp de Brain had matters well under control in Class E, while another father and son crew, Cliff and Louis Weichelt, in the N1 4x4 Bosel Toyota, had moved steadily through the field to occupy third place in Class D. Piazza Musso and Hearing were ninth overall and fourth in Class D, but were experiencing overheating problems on the Castrol Toyota Hilux. Husband and wife Niels and Zelda van der Valt had been second in Class E from the start of the Nissan Dealer 400, but were over seven minutes behind the class leaders. Durbanite Zane Pierce and Henny Forslew, along with Gavin Cronier and Robin Harton, whose vehicle wasn't ready in time for the race, are newcomers to the Castrol Toyota team and were putting on a strong performance in the Class E Hilux KZTE. JP and Linda Augustine were fifth in Class D and the sole survivors of the three-car GBS racing team. Brothers Mark and Stuart Moffat were sixth in Class D in the N1 4x4 Bosel Land Rover. Arnold Duplessis and George Baker started 45th and worked their way up to 20th before retiring with a broken front differential. There was no stopping Janiel de Villiers and Francois Jordan, 
Or maybe there was. A minor wrong slot didn't cost them too much time, and they were soon on their way again, safe in the knowledge that they had over a minute in hand over their nearest rivals. Crowd favourites Hannes Hobler and Richard Leake were second in the proudly South African Nissen, and at this point had just under two minutes in hand over the third-placed Ford Ranger of Neil Woolridge and Ken Schalthammer. The Ford pair was concerned that there were some extremely fast sections on the route where they were driving flat out in sixth gear. Voss and Terstecher were still fourth overall, but the power steering problem was starting to hamper their performance. 